Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to continue talking about the FMT package, right? The format package that's given to you as one of the standard packages provided by the Go programming language. And this is in chapter 12 where we're doing a tour of packages, right? Um, so in the previous video, we look at the printf related functions and which sort of implemented most of them or a good number of them. And um, there was also a bug in it. So I fixed that bug, FYI, I fixed that bug, so it's sort of better now. And I even add, added fprintf function um, to it. So that's checked in and it's in the repository. So definitely all the code I develop, um, unless I forget, at the end of the tutorial, I generally check it in and commit it to push it up to the repository. So, and that's in the documentation down below of uh, below the video. All right. So here we're going to be looking at the scan related function. That's why I put scan X um, on the introductory slide. And so that's because there's a scan, there's a scan line, there's a scan F, F scan, F scan F, S scan F, and the S of course, S scan, meaning that you can scan from a string, um, just like oh yes, you had S print F. But let's just jump in and start playing with it, right? And again, we're not going to try and implement the scan function like we did with the print function. We're just going to start to use it. And so here, let me write a simple uh, program. And let's imagine that I wanted to get someone's name, age, and their height. Now, would I do that? Well, I know that there's a scan function. So I might print out a message to the user if there, this is intended to be a command line program like we're doing. And then I'm going to use the scan function to say I want to scan these things. But how do I use the scan function? So best place to go is to go look at the documentation. And so let's go do that and um, see what it says about the scan function and what it expects. And we look at the scan function, we see that oh, it expects, um, it reads from standard input, it says scan read text from scan standard input. It stores successes, those values in successes variables that are prompt that are passed to it. It treats spaces and new lines um, the same. And no, notice this is a scan. So um, we can go back and now pass those um, variables that we have to the scan function with the hope of when we run the program, it would print a message, stop at scan, read the values in, and then put those values in the variable for us. And then hopefully we'll be able to print back out this nice sentence, you know, hi, whatever your name is and blah, blah, blah. So let's see if it works that way. So when we run it, we have a problem here. Well, let's fix that. Um, that's because I left something out or didn't realize that it was missing. But once we run it, we'll see it though. It didn't stop and wait for us to type anything. Um, just sort of went right through and of course there's it prints an empty string because it didn't read anything and zeros for our values. So what is the problem? So let's sort of go back and if you remember when we look at the documentation it said it, oh, it returns a number of items scan and an error. So let's print that out and see if this can tell us what the problem is, why it just went right by our scan instruction to put some read some input from the user and let's rerun the code again after we fix it up this way. So um, code is fixed up, let's run it again. And this time we can see what it's saying. It's saying, hey, you know what? I expected a pointer for the string, so let's do that, we run it. And now it's saying I expected an end, so we might as well fix the last two and run that. And there we go, it's exactly like we expect. It's stopping, it's waiting. And we could type all our input in one line with spaces or on separate line because the documentation said for scan that it treats a new line like a space. Again, this is for scan. Okay, we'll see different things when we look at some of the different ones. All right, so this is looking pretty good. So what else is going on? What else can we do? So what about if we use scanf? And the reason why I wanna show you scanf is to show you this difference with what you expect with new lines. So with a scanf, notice I was able to type all my input in one line and enter. But if I type Jane alone and enter, it doesn't wait for me to type the rest. So definitely pay attention to that. And that's why I keep saying that oh, with scan, it can treat new line as spaces, but with scanf, it does not. When you do in scanf, you enter a line by pressing return, it tries to parse that line for all the values that you specify in um, that formatted string. So definitely keep that in mind. If you find this confusing, best thing to do, is test, play with it, um, write some demo code, and you should be to try and get your demo code, um, get to understand this. 
Now let's imagine that oh, I had some my input in a string variable. And so this is where the S scan F would come in handy, where I can say scan from that string. Or I could just simply use S scan, so it doesn't have to be scan F. And so I can use scan from that variable into and from that string variable, which have the values I want, and then scan them into appropriate variables, as you see there, um, using um, input on line 15, and then scan them into thing and use them. Um, so the other thing we can do is to say that um, what about if we change things around, right? And we say we want to scan an integer first, and you know or we put all our values together, like Jane and our age and everything. Remember, if it's hard for you to be able to tell where things stop and start, it's pretty much impossible for the computer to do the same thing. So um, that's just some quick um, code I wrote there to show you as how if you don't properly space things out, you're not going to get the result that you want. If you type it all together like here, um, notice how it reads Jane all, um, 35, 5.6 as one thing. All right. Um, same thing with when you do scan F, again, you, it's going to expect that new line to be able to terminate, um, to give it enough input and it doesn't find enough. Well, that's going to be a problem. Again, all this means that all you simply have to test your program to make sure it works and it's reading the input as you intend. Now, let's imagine we had a data file and I'm going to put um, two lines of text in the data file, right? So we have playing, or we can imagine this file is generated However, right, we know to generate files now, we know to open and read files. So what we want to do is open this file for input, our data.txt file, and we're going to loop, loop over until we don't have an error. And then if we have an error, we're going to fatal log and get out of there, because if we can't open the file there, and then there's nothing to do really. And then, um, then we're going to do four. So long as, so open and fail, then we have a nil. So, so long as nil is equal to error, that means we don't have an error then I want to scan from the file. So we use F scan F. We don't have to use F scan F. And then the idea is that we're going to keep um, reading values here from the file, print it out, go back around, read the next um, thing. And we know that with F scan F, it's going to read sort of to the end of the to a new line um, before it's finished for that line and continue. So if we go and we run our code and see what this look like, we'll see that oh, um, it does seem to um, well, first of all, I got to put the file, the data file in the right directory. But once I go back and move that into the right directory and I rerun my code, excuse me, I'm talking here without taking a breath. But <laughs> once I do that, now you can see that when I run it, it works fine. But of course, I have this at the end, I have this thing, this log error that says that oh, it end on um, reading zero values and end of file which is understandable because once we get to the end of the file, um, we don't want to continue reading. So we can say, don't continue re looping so long as you eat, reach at the end of the file. We also know from talking about reading from file that the first thing we should do when we read from a file, including scan, is we should process our input first before we check for an error. And the reason is because we can have a partial read. So we definitely want to say, if we, we were able to read any number of fields, then we should um, print those out first before we say fatal on end of file. But do we really want to do a fatal on end of file? We want to do a fatal on if there's some other error besides end of file. So um, we're going to change this up a little bit. Now there's a bug in this code and I'm not going to spend the time to show you all the stuff um, that I went through to detect that bug because it, it had me going for a little bit for a good five minutes really. And so basically, um, I jump back to the documentation to say, hey, why isn't this act behaving as I expected? And you know, I saw the, the scan line one and it says, okay, read to the end of file. But I also know that oh knew that oh scan and scan f. I mean, I've been using these in C um, forever. And so I, I, I couldn't write um figure out well why wasn't it working? Basically, scan seemed to not be um, detecting the end of file. And so I decided to just hack this and say, well, okay. If I couldn't read any values and I still have no errors, then um, I'll just exit out of this loop. You know, so that's sort of a hack. But I decided to um, print out also because it looked like I'm not getting any error and I keep staying in this loop. I keep going in even if there's no error. Then I decided to print out was the number and error after I finish reading and there's the EOF. So how is it that when I go back to test my for loop, that I'm still not getting EOF, I'm just getting nil. And then it hit me, my value is being overwritten, my error value is being overwritten. And so 
then it was just a matter of going ding um what i was doing is i was cre recreating a local error within the loop that was getting overwritten and when i go back to the top of the loop on line tw tw 23 i had nil from the the nil the, the error that was outside which was the one that i got as a result of opening the file successfully so of course if i go back up i'll have there's no error and i keep going in even if i'm at the end of the file so once i fix that and of course now i defer my closing of the file which i failed to do before when i opened the file so that's on line 21 um everything worked fine and see so you can see if we go back and we rerun the code now um it works fine so lesson learned there is make sure that you're not recreating a variable within a loop as i was doing there online whatever i moved the line now but i was recreating and i was creating a new error variable err variable which was masking or hiding the error variable that i had outside the loop and hence i couldn't see that how i was reaching end of file because my loop for loop simply said if there's no error going and the fact that i reached end of file it should have stopped and um, I was just bothered why that wasn't happening. I went back to the documentation. I see that it's supposed to gen get, get end of file. Anyway, long story short, that was the error. All right. Um, this is it. Um, I think, again, scan is pretty easy. And except for the fact that I introduced a bug in my code, please um, test, 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 test. And hopefully when things don't work, well, put those debug statement in there to say, well, I expect in the file here, let me see what it actually is. And hopefully that, those sort of things might help you um, as it did in my case, when I put that, print that out, I was seeing that I was getting end of file, but somehow when, when I enter my loop, it was nil. So I knew somehow it was overwritten. And then I looked, I'm like, okay, the only place it was being assigned there was on line 25. So anyway, long story short, um, I was test. We're going to talk about the testing package at the end of the series and there's a reason for that because again i want to build up and not a testing is important not important and is the last thing you should do but um it would have been difficult f f to explain really testing and on methods and all these other things until we've gone through and like we've done now where we know structures and method and then it's just a natural order to me in terms of we play with files and then you know learn about standard in standard out and then know about formatted things so testing package is going to come toward the end in its own chapter all right i'm not going to make this any longer it's already long enough um take care thanks for subscribing thanks for spending your time with me um thumbs up the video um subscribe if you haven't and keep spreading the word see you in the next video bye have a great day